the nature of the life that God has given us is when everything is frazzled and feeling like it's falling apart on the edges. In the center and the heart, it is well. I don't remember the exact story of the origin of It Is Well With My Soul, but it's not the kind of song that you sing because everything in your life is going peaceful. It's because everything in your life is just falling apart, and yet in the middle of that, God gives us the peace that passes understanding. Amen? Amen. 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 So, welcome to uh, Steerstown United Methodist Church. Um, for all of you that are gathered here in person, for those who are also gathering uh, reaching us um, remotely and online. Um, so if you were here last week, you saw the craziness of the Vacation Bible School with the, with the shack and everything else. And this week we have the Noah's Ark, um, which is part of the children's musical camp that just took place this past week. And I just wanted to give you a, a taste of that so that you are aware of what's going on in the life of the congregation. I think there's a theme in there. This, this, wasn't that in the video last week with the Vacation Bible School? Um, you know, making waves. The, um, so God has been so good for us to be able to do this. My thanks to Sandy and to Maddie and to all of her helpers. Um, one of the things we found is, is that our, I don't want to say our people are dropping like flies, but we've had, we've had 11 people that were signed up to help or to do a variety of different things that are part of the congregation the last two weeks come down with COVID. And, um, and so prayers for them as they continue to recover and as they help. Um, so uh, despite all of those setbacks and trials and tribulations and everything, God has been so good. And so we're also continuing to pray for protection for the um, summer theater, for, uh, for all that is going on there as we move forward. Lord, we thank you for your presence, for your love, for your provision, for your grace. We thank you that you are here with us now. Um, and that in you, we can always be at home. Amen. Good morning. I don't know about you, but it seems like grace is a really important theme for us uh, right now, this week, and with everything that's going on in our lives. How we need your grace, oh God, more and more, and how we know we can trust your promise that your grace is enough. Amen, church? If that is your truth, I invite you to rise and sing with me. Your grace is enough. Great is your faithfulness, O God. You wrestle with the Lord's restless heart. You lead us by still water, lead to mercy. And nothing can keep us apart.
our love for Jesus. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing His word. It sounds like music in my ear. Sweet is on earth. Oh, how I love Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of His precious love, the Savior's perfect Oh, how I love Tells me all of my heart to feel my deepest fear. Who in his soul bears a part that God can bear below. Oh, how I love you. thought, I invite you just to say your name. He first loved you. David. Thank you for your grace and love that was there before we ever knew it, Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Make time to greet your brothers and sisters in the faith.
shelter of the Most High, who abide, who abide in the shade of the Almighty, say to the Lord, my refuge and fortress, my God in whom I trust. He will rescue you from the fowler's snare, from the destroying plague. He will shelter you with his pinions, and under his wings you may take refuge. His faithfulness is a protecting shield. You shall not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that roams in darkness, nor the plague that ravages at noon. Though a thousand fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, near you it shall not come. For he will give his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Amen. You may be seated. We offer ourselves and our gifts to God and calling for the, for the ushers as we continue. Um, summer is busy. Um, I've remarked from my very first year here that during the summertime, please, the, uh, it's like the, the entire facility groans under the stress of what we're trying to do. Um, and the volunteers um, are also um, in need of supply. There's opportunities when you're in town, and um, there's always changes that are going on. The well this evening will be on the front lawn of the church, um, which is a change because of another family that has COVID. Uh, so just remember, Sunday evenings, the well is, is gathering outside in various places, um, and uh, just an opportunity for fellowship and to grow in, in Christ. The um, summer nights also, 8.30, here in the sanctuary, worship with this being led by Summer Theater, and uh, is always uh, well-led and inspirational. Um, continue to pray for the ministries of the church as we are undergoing this process. So uh, thank you so much for participating in the survey. The church council has received the results of that survey. Um, and they will be coming back to you with some summaries about that and some plans for the future. In addition, some of the things that came out of the survey have gone to the building exploratory team for them to take into consideration. And they will be planning to meet with the architect soon. Um, and you, again, you will be invited to be a part of that process. So things keep moving along in the midst of a world that is drastically changing. And God is good in the provision. Amen? Amen. so good you so Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share what you have so graciously given us back to you. Please use these, our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings to further your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. This morning for prayer, I'd like to invite us to participate in a bidding prayer. I will bid you to pray. And I'm going to use the acronym ACTS, Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, Supplication, which is just a really helpful 
prayer discipline for all of us. But now here is the gospel from the book, from the gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 51 through 62. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent the messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for his arrival, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he, Jesus, turned and rebuked them. Then they went to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, First, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The word of the Lord. Siri is trying to help. (laughs) You can't make this stuff up, right? (laughs) What do you think of when you think of home? What it means to go home, to be brought home. Um, When we talk about home, homecoming, uh, we look forward to homecoming. Uh, Home someplace where the, the people are familiar with you, it's a comfortable place. It's, you go home, you put your feet up. Um, it is, home is, is with family, um, and there's lots of traditions that having to do with home. When I was growing up, it was a little confusing to me because when we were two years old, we moved from Chambersburg to, when I was two years old, we moved from Chambersburg to Mechanicsburg, but we would talk about going home. And it always meant going back to my grandparents' house in Chambersburg, and we would go Friday evening, sometimes Saturday morning, spend the weekend with them, go to church with them, um, and then come back to Mechanicsburg. But I don't know, it just seemed like for many, many years there, whenever my parents were talking about, are we going home this weekend, it was always someplace other than where we were living. And then finally, just began to think, well, home is where my family is, and began to talk about Mechanicsburg as being home. Um, But then that also shifted at at different times when my parents sold that home that I grew up in and moved into a cottage at Bethany Village. It just, that never quite felt like home. And then when we, uh, after our daughter Allison was born, she was just like two or three months old when we built a home and, and moved to Redline and raised her there um, and lived there for 26 years and then sold that home when it came here and, and for us to live in the parsonage. And uh, we were ready to downsize and all those other kinds of things, but it was really, really hard for Allison because she was imagining bringing her children to mom and dad's house, the house she grew up in, to home. Um, when we talk about people, even as we're aware of, of George pending death, um, people who want to die at home rather than being in the hospital. So it's the place where they would prefer to die, where they want, feel like they're surrounded for their loved ones. And that's assuming that home is a, feels like a safe place. So there's so many things having to do with home, where you raise your children, where, where people were born, where they die, and all those other kinds of things. And yet, in the gospel passage, it almost sounds like Jesus is against all that. He doesn't want us to be settled at home. He wants us to be followers 
and pilgrims and on the road facing challenges. When he says about that he has no home, for those who want to follow him realize that they are moving away from those things. And the two people that he was talking to wanted it both ways. They wanted to be settled home and follow Jesus. And Jesus was saying, that's not the way this works. The passage of um, Elijah being swept up into heaven where Elijah goes home to be with God, he has a follower, Elisha, and Elijah goes wherever Elijah goes. And in that, as the last days were coming and Elijah knew that he was going to be swept up into the heavens, he visited many, many different places. And in that, just like three or four days before that event came, um, if you look at the biblical cities that they went to, they were traveling about 20 miles a day to be able to hit all of those different spots. And, um, and Elijah kept telling Elijah to stay. And he said, no, I will go wherever you go. So there was something about being a follower on that pilgrim journey that is consistent with what Jesus is also asking us to do. So maybe Jesus is against it, because Jesus knows something that we don't know. I remember being asked to uh, preach a series on family, what the scriptures say about family. And I picked this passage, and the pastor who was leading the worship service says, I can't read that. You know, you, you're, I was, the passage of scripture was talking about, um, you know, burying your father, you know, leaving your family behind, uh, doing all those things and saying, yeah, but what Jesus was doing was a radical shift in the nature of reality, that Jesus was a challenge and a transforming presence, and that Jesus wasn't what everybody expected him to do. I mean, if Jesus did what everybody did, he would have gotten married, he would have had a family, he would have probably followed his father's trade and continued to be a carpenter. Um, he would have gone regularly to his local synagogue, maybe had been a, a leader there, but not the transforming person that changed the world. One of the things that I think that Jesus knew that maybe we don't know is that you can never go home again. Now, some of us experience that when you get together with family doesn't matter how old you are, don't they sometimes treat you like you're still a little kid? Or they put the pressures on you, you know, it's like every time I, I remember um, attending weddings and having family members challenge other family members, so when is your turn? You know, as if everybody has to get married and this is the right thing for everybody. Or if a family member is expecting and everybody else is cringing because it's like now that, you know, grandma's going to say, and when is your turn? Or you have one baby, and when's the next one coming? There's something about you can't going home. It's kind of like a hermit crab. You know, they outgrow their shell. You have to have them with other shells, and so eventually they will outgrow the one and move into a larger shell. There's something about what Christ does within us that we outgrow our lives. We outgrow our families. We outgrow our community. We outgrow our limited perceptions of the way that things are. That uh, when you see a tree and you see how the growth with the rings, it's like the nature of our spiritual life and our spiritual growth is an ever-expanding, it's an ever-opening, it's an ever-embracing, it's an ever-more-loving, a larger and more diverse group of people until hopefully our souls have expanded to the point where it's willing to embrace all of reality and God's grace. So if we're going to follow... But one of the things that will happen is, is that if we resist that, could you imagine outgrowing your shell but not wanting to change? You know, it's like having a 
favorite pair of shoes when you were growing up and your feet outgrow them, but you still try to squeeze your feet into them because they were your lucky shoes or I don't know. So we outgrow it. But the other thing about it is, is that Jesus teaches us by his birth and life and death and resurrection and ascension and his presence with us that home is not a place or a condition. Home is a relationship. It is specifically a relationship with God. Which means that everywhere you go, God is always present, always with us. Everywhere, anytime, any place, any situation, any circumstance, you can be at home. You can rest in the presence. It's like our spiritual life is kicking back with God and putting our feet up. So the, the whirl of the circumstances around us, the confusion of the world, that part of us that always longs for things to be different. One of these days when things slow down, right? One of these things when life is a little bit more simple, right? One of these days when we have more resources or when we accomplish this or something where we will feel more at home when the circumstances of our lives change or um, somehow when we get into this relationship or when we finally marry or when we finally settle down or when we, you know, that then everything will be okay. And yet you have Paul, who followed Jesus Christ extravagantly um, in a committed way, saying that whatever circumstance in life he found himself, he was content. And this is a guy who says that when he was in prison, he was beaten almost to death twice, he was shipwrecked at least twice, and whatever circumstance he found himself in, he was content. So, Maybe it's time for us to stop trying to go home again, to be home, to be a homebody, to play it safe. It's time for us to stop trying to make a home or create a home or try to think that something has to change in our circumstances or our lives so that we will finally be settled and we'll be okay and we will be safe and we'll be all those things that we want to ha have when we think of being home, and just claim right now, here and now, home is not a place or a time or a circumstance. It is a relationship. It's available to us 24 hours a day, 70 um, days a week, 365 days in a year, always, ever, has always been and always will be. Scripture says that, that our true selves live in the heart of God where nothing of outside circumstances can touch who we truly are. So it's time to come home by claiming that home has been and always will be where you are right now in your relationship with God. And think about how freeing that is. You don't have to make a home. You don't have to build a home. You don't have to conform. You don't have to, um, and especially conformity. In our society, you can be married. You can be single. You can have whatever the freedom is that Christ has given us to follow Christ faithfully without the pressures of this is the way that it should be. And for a church, you know, for us to be a church home, if this building burnt down, would we lose Stewartstown United Methodist Church? Or in God's presence, are we still at home? So it takes away all of those pressures and is incredibly freeing. And probably more than a little bit terrifying. Lord, we thank you for your call, your claim upon our lives that you have built for us a home that cannot be destroyed, that we can never um, be taken away from,
that will never be taken away from us. Uh, Lord, because you are our home. We came from you. We return to you. And we thank you. Amen. Wherever God calls us, that is home.
So God says to you and to me, follow and welcome home. Go serve God and your neighbor in all that you do in the presence and the power and the grace of Christ whose kingdom is coming and will not be stopped. Amen? Amen. Amen.